guys, what's going on? I'm back with another video. First and foremost, happy Wednesday to everybody. So as you probably know by now, I do a new series every Wednesday where I talk about the football games that are going on that week, talk about who I think is going to win, uh, and that whole sort of thing. So now we're going into week nine, so let's go ahead and get started talking about the week nine game. So first up here tomorrow night, the Thursday night game, we've got the Atlanta Falcons playing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, I'll just come out and give the pick right at the beginning here because I think it's pretty clear. I've got Atlanta winning this game. It's an NFC South divisional matchup. Atlanta's 5-3 and three versus Tampa Bay's 3-4. and four. Uh, If you just look at strength of schedule here, I mean, the very last game either of these teams have played, uh, Atlanta just beat Green Bay 33-32. to That was a good game, actually. It's a good close game. I think we've kind of uh, been missing good matchups this season. Whereas on the other hand, Atlanta just lost to Oakland 30-24, uh, to I believe. Matt Ryan's playing some of the best football he's played uh, quarterback for Atlanta right now. I'm not counting them out uh, of anything, and obviously they're they're the stronger team here, so I've got Atlanta winning this game. Moving on to the Sunday game, Sunday at 1 o'clock. Oh, wow, well, no. Uh, this, see, this is one of those games where a few years ago would, you know, would have been a really good matchup, not so much this year. But we've got the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, so Baltimore, it's kind of like Carolina. It's a team that you're just so used to associating uh, with you know, just being strong and playing, you know, certain teams hard that when I see Baltimore, I think of the 2011, 12, 13, 14 Ravens and I'm, you know, kind of, kind of forgetting that that's not who the Ravens are this season. Kind of like the same way you kind of got to, you know, teach yourself that that's the case with a lot of these teams this season. And it's not just bad. I mean, there's some teams who, you know, everybody thought was going to be bad who are good. Uh, you know, the Vikings, the Eagles. I mean, you could just kind of go on and on. It really seems like that's the story of the season. But anyways, getting to this game, uh, I've got Pittsburgh winning this game. They're coming off their bye week here. Roethlisberger, uh, he, I think it was like a torn meniscus he had surgery on. Uh, I think he said it was like the week after I forgot who. I think they played the Patriots, so I guess that's a so that's obviously a big game for them. He was quoted as saying, "If this was the playoffs, I could have played." So he's just really a tough bastard, as we you know, as we all know. The Steelers ended up losing that game. They just had their bye week, which quite frankly couldn't have come at a better time for them. Give everybody a chance to rest, especially Roethlisberger. It's not known yet if he's going to play. Uh, I mean, I don't see why you should play him against the Ravens. You could probably you know, even with Landry Jones, I think you could you'd probably still beat the the 2016 Ravens. They're not. Uh, a whole lot to be over the moon about. On the other hand, Roethlisberger has that reputation for just, you know, like I said, being a hard bastard. So I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if he if he played, but there's really nothing official uh, out yet about that. Just in terms of the standings going into this game for both teams or just how they're doing. Like I said, the Steelers lost their last game to the Patriots 27-16 at home. Uh, the Ravens, on the other hand, had a bye week as well in week eight. And if you go back to the game before that, they lost to the Jets, who aren't about a whole lot. Uh, 24 to 16. So, I mean, if you aren't convinced already, you know, obviously I, I've got Pittsburgh winning this game. All right, so next game up here, we've got another one o'clock game. The, <laughs> get the hell out of here. We've got the Dallas Cowboys and the Cleveland Browns. The Cleveland Browns cannot catch a break this season. It's like every time I do this video, it's like they're either playing, you know, like the Patriots, the Cowboys, the Steelers. The, I mean, it's, it's like they, they don't, they, they can't catch a break. It's unbelievable. I mean, on the other hand, they did just pull off a, I think shocking is really the only word you could use to describe this trade. They got a, a like a really good linebacker, I guess, from New England in exchange for, and I, and I couldn't believe it when I heard it, it was in exchange for, it's like a third round conditional pick. Anyways, they got this guy, so, you know, I guess there's hope for them. I was, I was looking up uh, betting odds, I guess, officially this last week here. This was like the last week you could bet on the Browns to win the Super Bowl. They were plus like 100,000, something ridiculous. I mean, it's not like they were going anywhere. But anyways, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, there it's the, the sun is set on this season for the Browns. On the other hand, with the Cowboys, you've got this blazing hot debate whether or not, you know, Tony Romo... Uh, you know, should, should take over for Dak Prescott. I personally think that, like, Tony Romo's kind of earned at least a game. Like, just let him, let him play a game. Just so, you know, like, at least you have film on him. You know what I mean? Like, just at least let him play a game. You've got film on him. So that this way you can make, like, an honest comparison between the two guys. You know what I mean? Like, just, you know what I mean? Like, not like some old film. Not like, you know, Tony Romo of the past. You know, let's get, like, all 22 film of Romo. Pair it up with you know, uh, Prescott from, you know, like like the last game. You know what I mean? Just get like an honest comparison and then decide. I mean, obviously, 
Dak Prescott's been uh, has been for real, but I mean, like, just but I mean, just just settle the thing. You know what I mean? But every week it's like, hey, uh, Jerry Jones, is it gonna be uh, Tony Romo when he comes back? It's like, ah, you know, I mean, come on, you know, figure it out. Yeah, but anyways, I got the Cowboys blowing the shit out of the Cleveland Browns in this game, and I am kind of one of those people who's kind of sympathetic to the Cleveland Browns. Not because I mean they're they're awful. Let's just be clear about that. But it sort of gets to the point where you lose so many games that that's sort of like you know. That people just kind of love to hate on you. You know what I mean? So, next game up here. Ah, another, another one of these. We've got Jacksonville uh, and Kansas City at 1 o'clock. I've got Kansas City winning this game for the obvious reasons. Jacksonville's 2-5. and five. You flip that record around. 5-2, and two, you got Kansas City. Jacksonville just fired their offensive coordinator. They promoted their quarterback coach to offensive coordinator, I think. They're really just, uh, you know, things are not going well down there in Jacksonville. So I've got got Kansas City winning this game, much stronger team. Next game up here, 1 o'clock game, uh, divisional matchup. We've got the New York Jets and the Miami Dolphins. I've got the Dolphins winning this game. I'm kind of eager to see Jay... Now, how do you say this guy's name? It's Jay... 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 Jay, You know who I'm talking about. The the guy's a beast. The other side of the ball, the Jets, their quarterback situation is just... Nothing would surprise me with them. I mean, hell, they could announce that, like, friggin' Chad Pennington is their quarterback again. Like, I, I don't know what's going on over there. However, if you look at the stats, you'd think, you know, Miami's blowing them away. In terms of passing yards per game, it's a difference of exactly one yard. The, uh, the Jets have an average of 230.6 yards per game. Dolphins have 229.6, so it's exactly one yard. So they're actually evenly matched as uh, as bad as, as the Jets have been as of late. So I've got Miami winning this game. So yeah, next game up, another 1 o'clock game. We've got the Detroit Lions and the Minnesota Vikings. I've got Minnesota winning this game because Minnesota needs to bounce the hell back from this, this slump they've been in. Now, if you go back to, I called this a few weeks ago, if you go back to the I don't know if it was the first video or the second one of these that I did. I talked about how the Vikings, you know, they're all right. They've been hot here, but they're going into a bye week. And bye weeks are notorious for just breaking teams' momentum. Like, as soon as you come out of the bye week, everything the Vikings had going for them, completely gone. Shellacked by the Eagles. They just lost embarrassingly to the Chicago Bears. They lost to the Eagles. Eagles are good. I mean, that's legitimate. But, uh, you know, I said, you know, there's a danger they're going to get exposed here and uh, exposed they were in these last few weeks. Detroit, on the other hand, I, you know, I like to think of them as being, you know, pretty good this season. However, they just lost to Houston. They beat uh, the Redskins and they beat the Rams. All of those were close games. Um, yeah, I mean, the, I, I got the Vikings winning, not only because they're better, but just because they've kind of got, they've got a safe face here. They, you know, they can't, they can't lose three in a row after coming out undefeated. Uh, as they did there. So I've got the Vikings winning this game. Next game up here, we've got the Philadelphia Eagles and the New York Giants. I've got the Eagles winning this game for a few reasons. One, this is just a bitterly contested NFC East rivalry between these two teams here. They they hate each other, that's for sure. Uh, however, I think, you know, the Eagles, you know, in their last game, Sunday Night Football against the Dallas Cowboys, they gave Dallas a run for their money in that game. The Eagles' defense... I mean, hats off to them. I mean, that they, that was a great showing they had. The game went into overtime in Dallas. They easily could have won that game. Great showing by the Eagles. Very strong this season. The Giants, on the other hand, are tied for second place with three other teams in the NFC East. So the NFC East right now, you've got Dallas sitting pretty on top at 6-1. and one. And then the Giants, the Eagles, and the Redskins are all tied at 4-3 and three right now. Uh, so, so there you have it. In terms of stats, the Giants are ahead, not by a whole lot. Total yards per game, 345.3 by the Giants to 317.7 average for the Eagles. If you want to keep looking at what you see on paper more, if you look at the last few games here, uh, for the Giants, they beat the Rams, which, I mean, that's not really an achievement, 17 to 10. They beat Baltimore, who, you know, depending on what you think of Baltimore this season, not not very good, obviously. They beat them 27-23, but they lost to a legit team, uh, i.e. Green Bay, 23-16 in Week 5. I think the numbers and the stats here kind of lie. Philadelphia is a really strong team. Philadelphia is a really strong team. They've got a lot of motivation, I assume, after that last game. They hate the shit out of the Eagles. I've got the Eagles winning this game. Next game up here, 4 o'clock game. We've got the Carolina Panthers and the Los Angeles Rams. I keep almost calling them the St. Louis Rams. I'm just so used to it, but nope, the uh, the LA Rams are back. Uh, I've got the Panthers winning this game. It seems like they're finally, like they've finally showed up. I mean, they just won their last game. Huge win for Carolina. I've got Carolina winning this game. It seems like the Panthers have finally showed up. I mean, I don't know what took them so long. I mean, if you think that beating Arizona 30 to 20, if that's showing up for you, then I guess I guess they've they've arrived this season. It's probably too late. 
Uh, they're I think they're right now they're sitting at two and five. Um, so so the sun is uh, is setting quickly on the Carolina Panthers. Uh, as far as the Rams, I mean I don't know how going into that last game being one in five. No defense. Defense isn't about anything. Secondary's not about anything. Just as bad as they were, somehow statistically the Rams are worse. Like I don't know how it. Is. I mean the Panthers have 387.9 yards per game total versus the Rams 307.6. I mean I think it's another case where what you see on paper isn't exactly telling you the whole picture here. But I think I think. Carolina is starting to get it together here. It's not like they're winning the Super Bowl or even, you know, really going to be close to getting there at all. It seems like they're starting to put out just a, a, a vague resemblance of the Carolina Panthers of 2015. Next game up here, another 4 o'clock. Oh, God, we got the New Orleans Saints and the San Francisco 49ers. New Orleans Saints, they're not great, but the 49ers, I mean, the 49ers suck ass. I mean, the, the Cleveland Browns, at least they've, at least being O and whatever, at least that's who you are. You know when you tune in to the Cleveland Browns, that's probably what you're going to see. I mean, they're going to try. They're, you know, they, 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 they know who they are. The 49ers, on the other hand, oh, my good gosh. I mean, they, I don't know if you've watched them, but it's not, I mean, if you look at their record, they're. I guess they're better than Cleveland or, or the Bears or anybody who's kind of at the bottom of the pile there. But the 40, just the level of play, insane. Oh my god! It, just, all right, think about this. If you look at their last three games here, last well, the, their last week was a bye week, but their last three games before that, they lost to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, thirty-four to seventeen. They lost to the Buffalo Bills, forty-five to sixteen. And then, I mean, the only thing here you could rationalize, maybe it's even good because they kept it close. Uh, week five, they lost to Arizona. I mean, they took the L3 straight week. I mean, this team here, if you just watch, like, just watch, just watch, you know, the mechanics on this. It's like not, I mean, Chip Kelly, I don't know. I mean, Chip Kelly, he leaves the Eagles. Doug Peterson takes over. Chip Kelly goes to San Francisco. I mean, I don't know how this guy's an NFL coach. I really, I mean, it's just really. I mean, obviously, I have the Saints winning this game. They just beat Seattle 25 to 20. I mean, that's the thing about the Saints. I mean, they're not. New Orleans, on the other hand, I mean, yeah, they're not the best team, but it seems like they have this uncanny ability to just pull out wins that you never thought they would. I mean, they beat Seattle last week 25 to 20. Um, so, I mean, hey, yeah, yeah, no, I've got New Orleans winning this game here. Next game up here, another 4 o'clock game. We've got the Indianapolis Colts and the Green Bay Packers. This would be a great matchup 10 years ago. Like, if we had, you know, uh, Brett Favre's Packers versus Peyton Manning's Colts, that'd be one of the best matchups. This year, on the other hand, I mean, I think every week when I talk about the Colts, I always mention that. As far as I'm concerned, ever since they ran that dumb fake punt play, it's been just, just straight down for them. You look at their last few weeks here, they just lost to Kansas City uh, 30 to 14. The week before that, they beat, well, it's Tennessee, so you don't really want to give a whole lot of weight to that, uh, 34 26. The week before that, they lost to Houston 26 23. They've got some problems in Indianapolis, about a stern there. Indianapolis is three and five. Green Bay's four and three. I mean, I've got I've got Green Bay winning this game. However, let's talk about Green Bay's problems just for for a minute here. His Aaron Rodgers is he, is he better? Like, is he did he fix whatever it was the beginning of the season here? Just this this kind of this this funk he got stuck in there. I mean, he was he was not playing well. I mean, there's other things going on with that team you could blame, but his mechanics, his delivery, he just really wasn't looking like himself there. It seems like he's starting to you know uh, you know fight his way back. I guess you could say they're four and three now. I mean, they did lose to Atlanta in their last game, but it was, you know, the game came down to one point. I mean, it seems like he's starting to, you know, get his get his stuff into gear here. Uh, you know, at the right time, not not a not a second too soon. Uh, so yeah, I've got Green Bay winning this game here. They're they're a stronger team. Next game up here, Tennessee Titans and San Diego Chargers. I've got San Diego winning. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna get into this one. I got San Diego winning this game. Uh, next game up, oh, this, this, this could turn into something. We've got Sunday Night Football, Denver Broncos, Oakland Raiders. I'm not sure if the jury's still out on Trevor Simeon or if it came back with a guilty verdict, if you know what I mean. Like, it seemed like the first few weeks here, it's like, oh, wow, the Don, John Elway, he, he you know, he lost Manning, he lost Osweiler, you know, kind of, you know, it, what, what seems like a turbulent offseason there for Denver. Uh, and then all of a sudden you see Trevor Simeon come out looking pretty pretty damn good. 
uh, and you think, oh, wow, the, the dawn has done it again, right? However, as time's gone on, we're starting to see some cracks in the facade. C.J. Anderson went to injured reserve with a knee injury, so it puts a whole lot more pressure on the passing game. And uh, it's starting to seem like Trevor Simeon is uh, d- does not have what it takes. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's not bad. However, it seems like uh, if Trevor Simeon, if you get him into a tough spot here, he's got eight touchdowns and four interceptions. I mean... I don't know. I mean, it seems like Denver, you know, if the, their defense needs to be firing on all cylinders or they're, they're in trouble. Uh, Oakland, on the other hand, Derek Carr. Oh, my God. This guy is really turning it on. I mean, 17 touchdowns. He's thrown for 2,300 yards. This guy here. I mean, Oakland Raiders, watch the hell out for them. They are looking really good. And I think it's for that reason I'm going to give this one to Oakland. They are really turning it on at the right time here. They're looking Looking spiffy, so I'm going to go ahead and give this one to Oakland. Next game up here, Monday Night Football. We've got the Buffalo Bills and the Seattle Seahawks. This game here is going to be a lot closer than you think, and let me tell you why. Seattle is not the 2013 or 14 Seahawks. Uh, Ever since they lost Marshawn Lynch, it's put a lot more pressure on Russell Wilson to make unbelievable plays, and ever since Russell Wilson got injured, he's, you know, less mobile, uh, than he was. He's been taking hits, and they just have not been able to put together those those magical drives, I guess you could say, that the Seahawks are known for. I always think of the NFC Championship game uh, 2014, I think, where they, I think they were playing Carolina. They got, um, they recovered the onside kick. I mean, if you think about it, you know how lucky Seattle is? I always think, like, Seattle and the Giants are, like, the two luckiest teams. In Seattle, when they played the Vikings in the game in the playoffs last year, they, you know, the Vikings missed the kickoff. When they were playing, you know, even though they went on to lose the Super Bowl a couple years ago, um, that unbelievable catch, which is, what, what's his name on uh, Seattle? Jermaine Curse, ridiculous circus catch. I mean, they get so lucky. It's just unbelievable. And the Giants, on the other hand, with a few Super Bowls they won, uh, it seems like Lady Luck is typically on their side. LaShawn well, McCoy uh, is injured. He was inactive this last week. Who knows uh, what his status is going to be here. I think Seattle and Buffalo are really similar in the fact that they really lean on their defenses. I mean, they really... Um, B- Buffalo really relies on their pass rush, just being able to bring pressure. Um, that's really a, a classic Rex Ryan thing to do. Whereas Seattle, on the other hand, quite honestly, their defense has been what's keeping it close. Um, so it, it kind of seems like we're going to see. It, it's going to be, this is going to be like Arizona and Seattle. Like I'm not saying it's going to be a 6-6 six to six overtime tie. I don't think it's going to be a high-scoring game. I think it's going to be close. And if I had to pick a team to win, um... I've got Seattle winning this game just because of Buffalo's long list of injuries here. I mean, the, the team is its like a friggin' mash unit over there. I mean, they are injured like nobody's business. Um, so, yeah, I think that's going to do it. That's going to do it for this week's games. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, that sort of thing. Uh, really, if you've got any feedback, anything at all, you want to tell me any ways I can improve uh, future videos, please let me know. Other than that, I just kind of want to talk about what's coming up next year. This Friday... Call of Duty 4 Remastered is coming out. Get excited for that. I am going down there Friday morning. I'm getting that game. We're going to have all sorts of all sorts of coverage on Call of Duty 4 Remastered. So get ready for that. I'm going to be playing the campaign uh, commentaries, that whole piece there. So get ready for that. I'm also going to have another 4K Battlefield 4 video coming out. Um, I don't want to lay too you know, detail of a schedule just because I got a lot of stuff I'm, I'm working on getting out here. So I'm not sure exactly what order it's going to come in, but I got a lot of stuff in the pipeline here. So stay tuned. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for this video.